Hey, my name's Fiona. I'm the conservator at the Museum of Vancouver. Um, I spend a lot of time cleaning historical objects, so it happens that people often ask me for advice on cleaning. You're at home, I'm at home. So I've decided to make this video uh, to let you know what you're getting into when you ask a conservator for advice on cleaning. Uh, so today we're gonna clean this crusty pot and this crusty teapot that I forgot on the burners. I should say right off the bat uh, that normally when people ask me for advice on how to clean something, it is because it is a super stubborn stain or grime that needs to be aggressively cleaned. I've been trained to clean things very, very gently in order to not damage valuable objects. So if I had my ideal world, I would spend three weeks on this puppy. But we only got a few minutes. Uh, so when we clean in conservation, we take into account three things. First of all, the physical properties of the object and of the dirt, the chemical properties of the object and of the dirt, and time and temperature. Uh, okay, so physical things. Um, an initial impulse when cleaning crusty pots is to use steel wool. You probably shouldn't, and here's why. The Mohs hardness scale. This scale is based on the idea that if you rub two different materials together, the harder one comes out just fine and goes higher on the scale, and the softer one ends up scratched and goes lower on the scale. With steel wool, you're in essence performing a Mohs test and gambling on the surface of your pot. Different compositions of steel have different hardnesses, so even if you have a cast iron pen, depending on how it was annealed or the amount of carbon it has, it could still come out softer than steel wool. The point is that nothing survives steel wool. In museums, uh, when we're getting rust off of iron objects, I like to use a copper brush, as it's definitely softer than the iron, and it's harder than the rust, so you can clean without any hardness worries. But I don't think we should use copper this time, as this guy is made out of aluminum. So this takes us to another approach, uh, using the chemical properties of the situation. It's important to know the composition of your dirt. Not to judge your cooking, but most of the crusts on cooking pans are going to be primarily fat and protein-based. Maybe some starch. And a lot of these things aren't immediately water-soluble. So, here's my pitch for dish detergent. Detergent is made of a long molecule where one side is water-soluble and the other side is oil-soluble and it acts as a bridge, making your insoluble fats suddenly able to work in water so you can wash them off. Detergent companies design these molecules to target specific kinds of oils. So your dish detergent is probably legitimately the best thing you can use to wash your dishes. I know, use dish detergent for your dishes. Groundbreaking. In my museum practice, I would 100% not use dish detergent because it isn't pH neutral. I won't get too much into pH. One thing that I will say is that acidity and alkalinity can make your cleaning go faster in this case. Fats can be broken down by acids and bases, but I found that most dish detergent is already slightly basic, so I add bicarbonate soda to punch up the alkalinity a little bit more. This is pretty cathartic for me, as in the lab I'm always working with solutions that are very close to pH neutral. So I'm letting my hair down here, going wild, and adding the bicarb. Uh, the last thing to think about is temperature. Reactions are normally sped up by temperature. Uh, what that means in museums is that we have to be extremely careful about temperature and use it in a very controlled way. Uh, but here, again, I get to let loose and just heat this guy up so I can get my pots clean. All right, so let's do this. Um, so we've got crusty pot number one, crusty pot number two, and first you can get rid of the crusties that just come off. So I've got some water boiling, got some water in here, pour it onto crusty pots. So you will need detergent and bicarb. And I've got two hardness of sponge because I know that these don't scratch my pots. But you know your pots best. Um, so I'm adding some detergent in here. Adding some detergent in here. Got some bicarb going. Got some bicarb going in here. And then we crank the heat. Basically, that's it. 
you just let it boil for a good long while and eventually you will sponge. So that's that. Good as new. Well, good as 100 year old thing that we inherited from my partner's step grandmother. But it's ready for more cooking. So, did I just spend the last five minutes telling you to wash your dishes with dish detergent and bicarb? Yes. Uh, could you have Googled it? Yes. But are you happy that you learned a bit about conservation today? 